Hey guys, so I've been running this American Delta 16 and a half inch drill press for quite a few years. And just a couple years ago, I got my dream drill press. And as silly as it may seem, Yes, I do have a dream drill press. So this is the Canadian number 18. Um, and a little bit of a backstory. This is identical sister to the Buffalo drill press. They built them from about 1930s through to maybe about the 60s and when I bought this drill press it was all original um, it came with the original motor which was a half horsepower and it was originally wired for 25 Hertz so it was out of, or it was being powered off of uh, Niagara Falls. So it's that old. That's where it came from. So it had been rewound, but it is only a half in or a half horsepower. And I needed something a little more beefy. So. <clears throat> with looking around a bit I found this two horsepower and this is an eight pole two horsepower motor so it is enormous like there's my hand it is about a foot in diameter and here is the motor tag so it is a two horsepower 865 rpm um 208 volts 7.4 or 7.5 amps and it is three phase so that aside it only came with three motor leads and I had to mount it because on a I mounted it I got myself a half inch plate because the back motor plate you can see is quite a bit smaller so I needed a bigger plate to mount that motor frame. So, and the original, the original pulley was so badly damaged, I had to pull it off. It's chipped. It's all wallowed out in here. And some of these come down to razor blades where they're kind of shearing off the belt a bit fraying them up pretty quick so I put a new belt on and you see little pieces of rubber flying around just dusty little dust particles of rubber anyway so now currently I only have one shiv or pulley on that motor which is okay because it is getting a VFD so I should be able to have enough horsepower to slow it down to half the speed and since this motor is an 8 pole which is only around 900 rpm 
and the old motor was a 1725. So this motor is already about half the speed. So here is the original motor starter. I'm gonna keep this. This was sandwiched back between the motor and those two screws. So it's just a manual contactor inside and it is a three phase, even though the old motor was a single phase. But inside, It has the two overloads and it's not been properly wired. Somebody's messed with the wiring, but, and then it has the contactor at the top, but since it's only single phase, it's only using two of the contactors, two of the three. So down inside, you can see the little contacts. And when I hit the start button, and the stop button so it works and for future use I'm just going to be using it for low voltage to transmit a signal to the VFD I'm as well going to be popping out the display and remotely mounting it I'll get to that in a second. But the VFD needs to be inside a metal box. Now, not all VFDs do, but this particular model should be mounted inside a metal box with proper strain relief to prevent the cords from ripping out of the little screws that are inside. So I just went to my local Princess Auto and bought myself an ammo box and I drilled a couple holes in the top well that will be the top but in the sides and I'm just gonna mount the VFD inside there I cut up a little piece of aluminum and that aluminum is just going to slide. I have to be careful. There's still burrs all on the on this metal, but that's just going to slide in here and subdivide the bottom two holes from these two holes. And what's going to happen is it's going to suck air in here and down the sides of the VFD up through the fan. And I have to cut a hole in here. And it's going to blow the hot air out and it's going to exhaust the two holes on this side and the two holes on the other side. So the VFD will just get dropped in like so. And evenly spaced, of course. And that will be it. Now, where this box, the new VFD box, is going to get mounted. I'm just better pull that out. Kind of and rattling around. Close this down. So those boxes seal up nice and tight. And this is gonna become my new pecker head. 
So this was my old pecker head. It got mounted on the side of the motor and got covered up with this cover. This is going to be my new one. So it's going to mount on, I'm going to pick up those four screw holes and transfer them through the side of the ammo box and mount that box there. And then that's it. I'm going to, I'm not sure if I'm going to cut this handle off or just leave it on. It might rattle around, so I'm not sure yet. But then we come around to the other side of the drill press. I'm going to put back on the original motor starter here. And then on the side of it, so I got to cut this back plate off. It's kind of got screws through it. Some are bent. So I got to get just that Allen Bradley box off starter contactor and next to it I'm gonna mount this little watertight electrical box and I gotta cut these little posts down a bit because I want to sink this display in here and then I have this chunk of aluminum. I gotta clean it up a little bit, but it's a big chunk. I'm gonna mount that right here and then put a little tiny toggle switch. So this particular toggle switch is an on-on switch. So it's not a three-way, like there's no three-way switch to it it's not on some of them it's on in the middle off and then on this one is on one way or on the other way so I'm going to use this as a forward reverse switch and whatever direction it's in when you hit the start button it's going to start in that direction and if you throw this reverse button or reverse toggle it will just slow down, stop, and then go into reverse. <clears throat> but at any time, I'm going to also hook up a foot pedal. And this foot pedal is whatever direction it is running in at the time, it will completely reverse that direction right on the fly with a foot press. You let go of the foot press and it goes back into its original direction. And the main purpose for that is for tapping. Some people might not feel that's important, but I do a lot of tapping. And it's important enough to me that I went out and spent $3 on a switch and maybe another $12 on this little foot switch. So I also had in stock a little piece of aluminum, quarter inch thick. That's going to be my new mountain plate for these three new items. So I'm going to cut this, remove that back plate, and the starter is going to mount something like that. This little switch somewhere here. And the display. So this display will read RPM and with a potentiometer. I'll be able to adjust the speeds. Stay tuned for when I have it all up and running.